Hi, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel, uh, like the video, share my official link as far as my official YouTube channel, and go to my website www.susanneedling.com. Thank you in advance. So I'm going to discuss in this particular official YouTube video, and you can probably, I would guesstimate, uh, distinguish those particular factors that this is a serious lecture in reference to the facts regarding my scuba diving in certain references because you know it's not as though anybody I've ever known in the time frame of 2009 who ever had common sense to just ask me about my own scuba diving. I've had people ask me about my certifications. I've had people ask me about some background situations, but I haven't ever had anybody have the common sense to ask me about my scuba diving, because that would be common sense. Because obviously, my scuba diving regimen that I personally created is exactly that. I haven't gone into the reasons why, except for the time frame of the lesser amount of people as far as the um, lake-ish work and hot springs work and stuff like that. I haven't gone into the reasons why, the specific actual reasons per certification, other than uh, my National Geographic Open Water Certification as well as uh, my dry suit certification. I could make a joke, sarcastically I suppose, with a bit of dry sense of humor in reference to, yeah, well, it was cold in March. That's how that goes. And so, it, it doesn't matter it was in the state of Texas in 2009, you know, the water is the water. So there wasn't anybody who ever had the common sense to just ask me. Um, there's the situations that had occurred in reference to McCoy Elementary School and Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District in comparison. Um, I'm going to guesstimate the recreational civilian scuba divers as far as those hypothetical problems to McCoy Elementary School in those particular references of certain situations I personally dealt with had to do with individuals that didn't have common sense as to just asking me in comparison to going and annoying McCoy Elementary School staff members and having no legal right or authority by my standards at all whatsoever to speak with my son or my daughter because my son and my daughter were not informed of anything regarding my scuba diving. My son and my daughter probably informed recreational scuba divers and or military individuals that they weren't ever informed of my actual scuba diving. I raised my son and my daughter to tell the truth, however, because there are those types of people who would hypothetically assume in comparison, well, the situations prove themselves as far as that's concerned because hypothetically in those capacities, why would you actually speak with the one and only person who did the scuba diving? That would mean you'd actually have to trust me and believe that I would tell you the truth. But that would also translate to, I would have to actually be asked in truth in comparison to others' assumptions. So for example, if you're just a civilian recreational scuba dive instructor, your title really means nothing in the ocean. I don't know if there are those who have realized this or not. There is this fact though that when you go scuba diving on land, you are not scuba diving when you present your card. When you are in the water, most likely 
there's not a point in time where any species swam up to you and commanded you to show your certification. Hypothetically, that's hypothetically a thing. So, while I earned 26 scuba diving certifications, and it was known that I'm medically retired because I had a head injury during basic training. When I was in the Army, I didn't graduate basic training. And um, I also um, didn't ever call myself a soldier because I didn't graduate basic training. That was a really big problem for those in the Army. As far as the recruiter station, my basic training unit, Fort Sam Houston, and everybody who was in the Army in the state of Texas that I met in person, face to face in person. They had this huge issue because I have said I'm medically retired from the Army, which is true, and I did not graduate basic training. And every time somebody tried to call me a soldier, I would remind them that I didn't graduate basic training and I took the Marine Corps view. Not that I was in the Marine Corps, but I took the view, giving the credit where credit is due, as to those particular factors. And so people had their opinions and their assumptions and their comments and so on and so forth. And what occurred during my basic training is what occurred during my basic training. I was only asked as far as what occurred just before my head injury. That's all I was ever asked. Nobody ever asked me about the day by day by day by day. Nobody ever did that. Not at Fort Sam Houston, not at Wilford Hall, not anywhere throughout my entire time of living in the state of Texas from the year of 2000 to the year of 2013. Nobody ever did that from the time frame I got back to the state of Texas in the year 2019 through to the year 2021 before my transfer out. No one had ever asked me. So I kind of figured, well, then it must not be important to anybody else because only who would find it important would actually have the common sense, similarly in reference to my scuba diving, only people who would find that important would actually ask me. Because why would you ask anybody else? Of course, you're, you know, there are those who have been capable to go ask others, but who would be capable to tell you about my basic training would only be people who were actually in my basic training. That's it. There's nobody else that you could ask about what happened in my basic training other than me. You might be capable to find a few pieces of paper here and there as far as different reports. Other than that, I would just ask what happened just before my head injury. So I told them what happened before my head injury. Now, there were some who had asked, well, tell us about, in regards of a few situations regarding medical hold units, tell us what's the first thing you remember about basic training. Well, I remember getting on the airplane. No, 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 no. Fast forward from there. Okay. I remember being on the bus. No, 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 no. Fast forward from there. Okay. I remember when we got to Fort Sill, Oklahoma. No, 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 no. Fast forward from there. Okay. I remember when we were put in the barracks and they went through our stuff and this hair situation regarding a female. No, 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 fast forward from there. What is it that you actually want to know? Because like you said from the first point of basic training that I could remember that you wanted answers to. So do you actually want those answers or what is your problem? What are your malfunctions? And so I got in trouble for having an attitude because I told that to E7s and E8s. So, you know, um, and you know, as an E1 who didn't graduate basic training, apparently that was an issue because, you know, we'll get to the point as far as how your head injury happened. Okay. 
So there was the night before in CQD. Uh, that's not what we want to know. Okay, so then on Palm Sunday, well, how did you know it's Palm Sunday? Because there were palm leaves and there were these flyers in reference to the church service. Oh, okay, well, tell us about this. All right. Fine. Um, the drill sergeant showed up afterwards after lights went out and started smoking everybody and then came around. I think that these other details are important. No, 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 Private, we want to know about this. Oh, okay. You know, you should probably get all of the details instead of only a few. And so that's no different than the way the civilian recreational scuba divers were because, you know, their time as far as whatever. And so, you know, anybody who actually knew me in person, face to face in person, before uh, the year of 2009, compared to the year of 2009, probably if they were to look back during those times, they would know whether or not they were a worthwhile support system because a support system is in person, face to face in person, compared to. So, in regards of my particular scuba diving, okay, I earned 25 of 26 scuba diving certifications before I went out to the Atlantic area of the ocean. I told those people that I was doing all the certifications as I was in part to be capable to be prepared to utilize my gear correctly because I knew what I needed to do. And so those civilian recreational scuba divers thought whatever they thought. I dealt with the various comments as far as my hair, as far as my tattoos, as far as what their opinions were, as far as what their feelings were in comparison to the actualities of. And so as polite as I could be, I listened to them and, you know, they went on and on and on about their stuff and so on and so forth. And I was kind of, all right, well, I mean, I was much more enthusiastic in comparison to today, the 11th of April, 2022, but it is what it is as far as that's concerned. So, you know, as far as the different lake and hot springs and quarries that I went scuba diving in, well, the only individuals who would most likely be capable to really go into depth as far as some of the stuff they may have seen in person, face to face in person, would be at Kingdom Lake or Possum Kingdom Lake or whatever it's called. It's also known as Hell's Gate. And so we were doing a cleanup and so they, all of the other scuba divers that were on the particular boat that I was in, they had issues. Um, they had complained because they couldn't see clearly because of all the stuff that had occurred. And it was one of those, I could see perfectly fine, what's wrong with you? And, um, you know, there were certain situations that, yeah, sure, maybe they saw some stuff being handled in regards of, and it is what it is. They were allowed to surface safely because I handled things. And so it is what it is. And so, um, you know, it was after the Vandenberg scuba dive as well as the Boca, Florida scuba dive, but nobody had asked me as far as a few things because that would make sense regarding that and so um yeah i dealt with a few things and the reality is what i dealt with is what i dealt with anybody who has a military background and or anybody who has known someone with a military background and then they've gone to go take care of something and while well, they're the exact same person, but there just seems that something occurred and it's not a personality change 
It's just they seem distant. Or they don't want to talk about something because they don't have a need to. Because that's realistically the facts. There's just not the need to sometimes. Doesn't matter what somebody else wants to know. It doesn't mean anything to them. Unless they have to actually debrief, they don't care to go into it at all. It's just common sense. And so, well, I'm not certain in reference to whether or not people I once knew in person, face to face in person regarding the year 2009 is concerned, noticed any differences in particular reference to my scuba diving after I got back from Florida. I mean, I don't even know if my son and my daughter and or my niece had noticed any difference regarding my particular attitude in reference to, you know, just, I had stuff to take care of. I needed to make sure my son and my daughter were taken care of as best as I could. Um, those particular situations were just as those particular situations were. So while some people might have certain opinions as far as the way you extract uh, information, then there are those who just have no need, want, desire, or preference to go into it because it realistically just doesn't mean the same to some people. Usually the individuals who went through it specifically. Usually. So I'm going to explain this in a different capacity. So I was born and raised in New Jersey in the 1980s. And in the 1980s and 1990s, I grew up going to the five boroughs of New York City. For those who need to understand those demographics, go look at them. See what the crime rates were in the 1980s and the 1990s. Take a look at the demographics in reference to Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the 1980s and 1990s. I grew up going to Old Tenet Presbyterian Church where there's a funeral home on site and I was friends with several of the caretakers including the lead caretaker. So I've seen a few things, okay? So then there's my Medal of Honor Art Project trips. And it's, it's known, especially if you go to my journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.seasonmeeling.com. Um, it's known that uh, there's the Irving in the year of 2011 situation. Not the first time I've dealt with stuff. Um, there is the Indiana year of 1999 situation regarding, I even had proof in a piece of paper a yellow warning slip from the local law enforcement in reference to that particular point in time. Because how was I supposed to explain what I was dealing with in the sky at that point in time? So, dealt with that. And then there's, you know, my childhood and my early teenager years in reference to the backyard area that also had the, um, development that came in and where the original model home was is, or well, there's only one model, oh, I think they had two model homes, but nonetheless, the original model home, that was usually where there was a situation. And so, you know, just, I mean, I've, I've seen more of the dead than I've seen the living in person, face to face in person realistically. So, um, and that's just from my childhood and teenage years. So, you know, you've also got me in reference to swimming out each summer in the Atlantic area of the ocean. And then there's my um, ocean poster project 
in reference to cleaning up the ocean and stuff like that. And uh, my invitation to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment. And there's also the fact that I had been through the International Taekwondo Circuit and earned in the International Taekwondo Circuit uh, second and third place for sparring in form as a green belt. So, you know, um, by the time of basic training for the Army, I was ready to go. I completed the CCC and COC courses on the first go-round. Um, I didn't flinch when there was the uh, different tanks that rolled through and <coughs> yeah, sort of stuff and, and all the dirt flying everywhere and whatnot. Um, it just was as it was. And so, um, there are a few other situations in that particular reference, but, you know, then I had my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. And so I woke up at Fort Sam Houston and Brook Army Medical Center. And, well, now it's uh, San Antonio Medical Center in comparison. And so uh, when the attacks on the 11th of September in 2001 occurred, and I went directly to the Air Force Tech Sergeant. Uh, my son, who was nine days old on that particular day, um, you know, a little infant carrier at the time, took him with me uh, to speak with the Tech Sergeant, and then a little bit later he was hospitalized, and being mom, I was kept in the hospital with him. And so certain situations occurred where I was asked questions, uh, different images were scrolled along the, the, the screen, you know, when certain guys walked in that had lab uh, coats. Um, they had army uniforms sometimes underneath in comparison to the Air Force pattern. And then sometimes they had black uniforms in comparison to um, Army or Air Force uniforms. And then there were some who showed up in business suits with the lab coats over and, and those things. And whenever they came in, usually the news, as far as CNN is concerned, um, all of a sudden the commercial would stop in the middle of commercial and there'd be somebody who ran on the screen and would go over certain details and I would be asked in reference to my, like my particular opinion as far as what I saw on the screen. And I'd give my opinion as far as certain situations. Uh, before then, I had made recommendations regarding the tech sergeant and his truck. He had a, I think he had a Blue Ranger or Blue F-150 or something like that. And informed him, you know, clear out the toolbox, um, clear out the entire cab, so that way when they run the mirrors around, you can get through fairly quickly and so on and so forth. And, you know, let the guys know when you get there, so that way when they leave, they can have that stuff taken care of, so that way when they come back on post, it'll be easier. And as the time frame goes along, you know, as that gets more and more smooth, it'll be easier because of uh, people that I personally knew in New Jersey because of the 1993 attack. As far as that's concerned, is I've already gone over the details of some individuals I've known in my childhood and teenage years as far as their employment. And so, gave some recommendations. Now, of course, the majority I've gone over is in reference to the biological mother, biological father, and my babysitter's husband. But there are plenty of people who know about Fort Monmouth and Fort Dix. And so they're not that far from Old Tenet Presbyterian Church. And Old Tenet Presbyterian Church was used as a hospital during the Revolutionary War. General George Washington's private office is behind the church. So military guys that, and, and civilians that are into military history, they get into that sort of stuff because the Battle of Monmouth wasn't far off 
from the area. So, you know, those who are into that, they, they go check that sort of stuff out. And so, um, that's kind of a, a, a different sort of, but same brief aspect. And, um, you know, it was as it was during those years and recommendations. So then in 2001, um, it was known that I was born and raised in New Jersey and grew up going to New York City and Pittsburgh and Philadelphia as well as Lancaster. And so those particular individuals had asked me different questions. So while there have been in the civilian sector, especially in the year 2001, um, several who complained about the images on the news, which I had seen, I didn't see anything to complain about. After my son had been released from the hospital, then shortly after I was hospitalized because I had been in labor in the hospital for seven days, and then that's not including the few days before where my membranes were stripped as well as the back and forth as far as the labor was concerned because of quite a few situations. And so when I finally actually went into labor that well, I had been on Pitocin and then I also had, um, well, I had an infection that developed because I had been in labors for so many days. And so they had the, um, what was it, antibiotics. And so, after having taken care of my son, I fought off the infection as best as I could, and I was hospitalized for a few weeks, and it was kind of the same sort of situation um, in the year 2002 when I was pregnant with my daughter. Mind you, I still had the subarachnoid hemorrhage in the frontal lobe of my brain during those times. Um, I was hospitalized again. It was kidney stones while being pregnant. Don't be jealous, nothing to be jealous over. And it was kind of the similar situation. I was hospitalized, I think, for two and a half weeks, maybe three weeks for that. They had done a stent situation, but the reality is I was uh, hospitalized for two and a half, three weeks, and similar aspects of while in the daytime. Um, random individuals would walk in to my room, similar situations, different military gear underneath the white lab coats or a business suit under the white lab coat, and then the television would go do whatever as far as that was concerned. There was usually, um, so Geek Squad guys know about this, there were, there were a few times I took a laptop in and there was kind of these gray squiggly lines for those who remember rabbit ear television, kind of similar along those situations. And that's usually what happened, whether there was a commercial in the middle of and then all of a sudden you know, the little squiggly lines and then those factors as far as the news reports, same thing as far as those prior to times. And so, answered questions because I was actually asked questions and so went into those details and took care of it. So anytime thereafter of 2002 when anybody, and it didn't matter who you are uh, or were, um, if you yourself were not on the ground out in the areas of the East Coast overall, or um, in airplane areas such as airports. Um, I had and I have sympathy, however I have empathy for the individuals who were actually on the ground, the tarmacs, which would of course include the pilots, the uh, stewardesses, or I think that's what they're called, the airplane staff, the airplane um, traffic controllers, and so on and so forth, and passengers, of course, that were actually on the airplanes and in the airports, um, and then, of course, uh, law enforcement, fire department, and EMS, 
military because of the on the ground situations. And so when it came to civilians that I've met over the decades since, because this is 2022, I have sympathy to a degree. However, people who knew someone, who know someone, whatever, those types of people, I don't have sympathy for. I have sympathy in reference to um, the fact that it occurred. However, because of my personal experiences during that time frame, I don't have that sort of um, softness. I do when it comes to people who were children during that time frame. People who were in high school, more so though in middle school and especially elementary school, preschool, and infant age or just about to be born, I have far more empathy and sympathy for them, especially in those direct connections of similarly to people who were born and raised in the New York City area, New Jersey area, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Maryland, Delaware, DC, and Virginia areas, but also Florida. Not saying I don't have the sympathy and empathy for other areas, it's just a natural situation. And so um, I do what I can, you know, I'm honest in that regard, but I, I dealt with a lot of people from 2001, but especially in 2002 through 2012 that were um, problematic when it came to the after time frames of the attacks on the 11th of September in 2001, especially in the civilian sector that had no direct connection because nine times out of 10, those people wanted to complain about the news. And I was one of those, I don't have sympathy for that because I have sympathy for the people who were actually dealing with the situations on the ground because that would be com common sense. And I don't, it's not that I don't care about their, um, well, no, it really is. I, I just don't care. I don't care about their feelings as far as them being upset by the news. I don't care as far as how their emotions were because they had to see something on a screen. I had to see stuff on a screen too. I also can distinguish between what I saw on the news and then what I saw when I was on the military installation. I can easily distinguish between those facts. And while I acknowledge having written about some of those facts, as far as what I personally saw in finding a silver lining, which you can find on my website, www.susanneeling.com, I created a Dropbox link as far as I was concerned after copywriting on all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, people have pop culture references, I would guesstimate, in comparison to the needed, necessary distinguishing factors between reading the words and what was seen during the news cycles, during those time frames, compared to the military aspects. And so, um, that's, that's kind of a big deal. And since I dealt with as many as I dealt with in person, face to face in person over the years from 2002 more so, but also in 2001, but mainly 2002 onward to 2012, as far as these individuals and their opinions and feelings and all that stuff uh, in person, face to face, in person sorts of situations. I kind of just, I became extremely desensitized to those types because while I can sympathize and empathize, especially with the ones that I refer to, it, and, and I'm sure that there are those who are similar to me whether in reference to being born and raised in the area, 
and or a large number of personal connections and or having gone to college and or high school into college out in the tri-state area especially because of the age in reference to the amount of uh, distinctive differences of the brain development compared to other factors of the time frame because it depends on you know as far as your childhood development so i spent 15 and three quarter years out in the east coast area in comparison and i highly attentive to detail in comparison to being distracted by certain things the way uh, four years difference younger than me my biological sister in those capacities i'm not uh, minimizing what she could have felt i am acknowledging there is an obvious difference between her being five years old from her first memory to the which would be 1991 through to 1998 there's a large amount of difference between essentially 13 and three quarters years of memory compared to that and so, and then the amount of different areas and individuals and experiences, so on and so forth. So, while some people have, um, in those particular references over the years, from 2002 especially into 2012, you know, there were certain similarities to what I dealt with in Crystal Lake, Illinois regarding certain factors and so and I did what I could to remain as calm as possible and even in the state of Texas there were a bunch of people the city of San Antonio in the year 2012 especially in what's supposed to be the consenting adult lifestyle those individuals know about certain situations and it's very simple to uh, look up driver's licenses apparently nowadays, especially if you use one to check in to certain lifestyle events that are supposed to be adult consenting. And so by the time of the year 2009, while very much motherly and mom, you know, about my son and my daughter as best as I could, and after the situation, as far as the three soldiers, after they got back from Iraq, as far as general, or I should say, um, Major General Gilman's office, as far as that particular situation, um, and having already gone after the Gulf of Mexico area, in the year of 2003, if I recall the first time, there's a few times because of certain situations that I could recognize but I didn't have the words for because of my childhood in reference to going to the Atlantic area of the ocean in comparison. And since I've had certain experiences, I want to go handle a few things because it's just how I am. And so uh, there's a few film pictures, that I, and I mean actual film developed pictures, four by sixes or whatever, as far as images that I've taken with all sorts of swirled lights. And, uh, and they're kind of similar to the New York City skyline pictures that I have taken in a very different capacity. And so, um, While some people that I've known over the years have had their opinions that I, I didn't usually ask for and had their feelings as far as whatever they felt um, situations are that I'm the one who dealt with what I dealt with. And that those are the facts. And so whatever modeling pictures that some could be accustomed to, I don't know what the normal thought process is as far as that's concerned, but I'm comfortable in who I am. So I can wear whatever clothing that I feel comfortable in and 
since I didn't ask certain things in reference to a few situations, opinions, well, that's what they are. And so while some might be accustomed to only one type of whatever their viewpoint is, I, on the other hand, similarly to my experiences, well, I'm accustomed to what I'm accustomed to. And so those are the facts. And so, similarly to now, didn't ever have anybody assist me get dressed before, wasn't gonna start asking, so, in regards of certain factors. And so while some people might not remember certain things, that's them, that's their situation. If the only things that they remember as far as my outfits are through my modeling, that's not it. I never wear the majority of my outfits that are in my modeling pictures weren't ever worn at an event. Just for clarification, unless they are pictures of me actually in the middle of a performance, they weren't ever worn at an event, so I don't know what uh, those people remember as far as what outfits I wore. Just for clarification. So, I am as I am. But, you know, there is that fact that that is that. That's my tattoo from my scuba diving. Because, you know, similarly to how you have the bottom of the ocean, mm -hmm, because that's my work. And so, I handled what I handled. I haven't ever been asked because that requires respect and etiquette. Without that respect and etiquette of being asked, as far as my scuba diving is concerned, that hasn't occurred regarding my scuba diving. Because that has not occurred, there hasn't been the need for me to go into those details beyond what more recently in the year of 2019 that I did in a not any different factor, to be honest, than what I had already explained in person, face to face in person with people. There's nothing in those particular references other than the naming of some aspects. Other than that, there wasn't any, um, there wasn't any of that. There wasn't anything new. To a degree, I mean, maybe one or two details as far as like Bobo, but not really at the exact same time because I've told people about growing up going to the Atlantic. I told people as far as Baptist Camp Lebanon having dealt with certain things. I've told people that over the years. I've told people as far as mer people are concerned, though usually it was, oh, well, maybe there's a movie you saw and then the Little Mermaid came out. No, that's not what I mean at all whatsoever. But, you know, the situations I dealt with over the years. And so, where is the deadliest location on Earth? The answer is in the ocean. There have been hundreds of thousands of ships that have sailed across the ocean from continent to continent you have the example of the Atlantic uh, in reference to the Titanic. You have the reference of certain ships that have been reported, usually cargo ships. That's well, nothing new. It's been going. It's been going on well before the year of two thousand. It's been going on for hundreds of thousands of years. You have books that have been printed from the eighteen hundreds and seventeen hundreds that go into detail about that. You have 
cave paintings that have certain images in those references all over the world. The ocean is the deadliest location on Earth. Some people might think that it's not considered on Earth, and yet it is, because it's on the Earth. At the bottom of whatever water area of the ocean is a floor. It's on Earth. It's facts. So, you know, um, I'm just taking care of what I've taken care of as best as possible to keep the on land above sea level as safe as possible where I could. Add situations as far as that's concerned, and it is what it is. Not saying anything minimal about it, but just in a minimal way because what does it actually matter? as far as some other individual. If you cannot scuba dive, like let's say you're a snorkeler, or let's say you go just to the shoreline, what does it matter to you as far as my scuba diving? Does it impact you? If it does not, well, my scuba diving is my scuba diving. If you go out on boats, well, you know, are you going in the water? Because I'm sure you probably want your boat to keep afloat. Probably don't want to <laughs> go anywhere else as far as except for where point A to point B is. Most likely, hypothetically, it doesn't really impact you. To be honest, if you don't have to deal with certain things, then you don't have to deal with it. If you go in submarines or you have a military vessel, well, you know, most likely people from the time frame, especially uh, from uh, 2009, though in all honesty, from about the year of 1984, 1985, those who were on naval vessels, if you started noticing certain things not being as much of a problem, well, you know, I was working, doing what I could. You don't have to deal with it, that's cool. By the time of 2009, you know, certain things weren't nearly as bad as a problem. Cool, cool. Now, there does come into the factor of recognition. And so, you can't officially do so. I know that there could have been certain things, but that ending of Stolen Valor, you can't even do in a by proxy way because of the way my scuba diving is unless you want to offend the beings of the ocean if you don't care about life on earth then i don't recommend it but by all means if you don't care about life above sea level on earth well then go ahead and do that um, but I don't recommend that because that would be problematic to all of those people who don't go scuba diving, or maybe who do, um, but that is a fact. You cause a bunch of needless problems in a whole bunch of ways, and all of the work that I personally took care of, um, well, that would cause a few pun intended waves in the ocean that would be highly offensive to the beings in the ocean that didn't have to deal with certain things and that would include people on land that go on boats and or submarines into the ocean and while some people whatever their personal opinions or feelings are it is a fact so similar to how there's truth behind every joke, well, there are certain myths and fables, legends, and there's truth behind. And so does anybody find it irony as to Disney in Florida and Coral Castle? Well, it's as concerned in reference to the Little Mermaid. If 
you take that into consideration. Because it just so happens to be not very far when you think about those coral exams. It's not the first and only story and reference or myth or what have you. There are the there is the difference though between Grimm and the actualities of life art. And there's also, just as other situations, there's two sides to every story. And so in those particular references, it is a situation that some people may or may not have taken care of. There are plenty of people who have, you know, oh, like mermaid this, or similarly to as far as extraterrestrials and that. And it is what it is. I don't really go into a big hoopla on a lot of stuff because I grew up the way I did. I didn't grow up um, the way my biological sister did. So people who would have asked her would have made a mistake. A huge mistake. Massively huge. Because why would you ever think that that would be a good idea? Unless you were in the superficial way then it would be a good idea if you were in the superficial way because of how I physically look in comparison. If you're in the superficial way, well then of course you'd go to that direction in comparison to me. If you wanted the truth, well you wouldn't go to Patricia at all. You wouldn't go to my son or my daughter about my scuba diving. You would most likely, if you wanted to know certain things, most likely would look stuff up online, possibly contact a few marine biologists, which is something I had looked at going into, possibly in a few military guides, whatever, as far as that's concerned. But if you wanted the truth of my scuba diving, that would mean you'd have to ask me. That's, that's, that's the facts. And so, though I didn't graduate basic training, and though I had completed my ASVAB equivalent, as well as essays and those three interviews as far as Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment, um, well, anybody who knew me in the year of 2009, well, they'd know. As quickly as at the first scuba diving after, or even when I was volunteering at International Scuba at that time in 2009. Anybody with a military background would be capable to take a look at how my response was in reference to the first scuba diving Texas chili cook-off. Sure, I can make fun of the fact that, yeah, okay, it's a red crock pot, whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what uh, is in my chili? A bunch of dead animals that I cooked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's dead cow in there. There's dead pig in there. Mm -hmm. That part I didn't go into as far as my response regarding my response that day. I left it the more lighthearted stuff. Because, you know. So, but the, the particular day of was, yeah, okay, well, yeah, I have the red crock pot with the silver stuff, yeah, huh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's, that's so what, I mean, you know, it's just a bunch of uh, beans and, you know, different types of beans, like butter beans or whatever, and, you know, and just a little bit of shiner rock or whatever, and then there's, you know, dead cow that's been ground up and put into the mix and then, you know, uh, Italian sausage, which is dead pig, dead cow, and dead chicken, and cut up and, you know, grilled or whatever, and a few other things, and there you go. What? Oh, I, I won first place. Cool. Awesome. 
much different uh, comparison I would guess to make than some might have uh, thought so but I did in prior official YouTube videos <laughs> make it more lighthearted and fun I suppose maybe could have laughed in those comparisons but that that's the difference in the reality compared to so that's the difference between satire and comedy compared to the actualities of. So all those people that I knew after the year of 2009, so like 2010 and 2011, 2012, more specifically in reference to the state of Texas, you know, much more lightheartedly fun in comparison to actually how <laughs> that's that. That's, that's, that's a, but that is what it is. And so I made my joke. So how? <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't go out to the farm to get the cow. I didn't go out to the farm to get the pig. I didn't go out to the farm to go get the chicken. I didn't do that. No, no, no. Grocery store is awesome. <laughs> Makes things so much easier. <laughs> Just saying. And so, you know, but that, that was my um, fuller response in the conjunction to the more lighthearted aspect. <laughs> so, you know, maybe there's some, the irony is I was speaking with two military guys and Skabuda, who was in the Marine Corps, just kind of, Susan, um, you know, uh, that was, because it wasn't until after I had been given, you know, that whatever, that Scabuto was like, Susan, that was kind of, that was kind of dark. Well, that's the true Scabuto. That's what Chile is, don't you know? And he just kind of, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how some cooking goes. Mm-hmm, yep, that's, it is what it is, and then, <laughs> despite the situation, Joe, as far as the corona aspects, he just kind of, you know, Susan, <laughs> I really like your sense of humor. That was pretty funny as far as what you had to say <laughs> regarding the, the chili and what it's made of. Yeah, that's cool. It is what it is. <laughs> what can I say? Truth is what the truth is. And so, as far as other situations, <laughs> is what it is. You know, I mean, anybody who has a certain background, they have that, you know, kind of understanding, um, depending on, you know. I've been going back and forth more recently. I'm still kind of taking a moment to process a video that I've, been working on regarding uh, Vigilance Elite's official YouTube channel. And so that particular one I'm taking a, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bit sometimes to <laughs> listen to certain things. And obviously I am not, you know, those guys, those guys are those guys and, and they've taken care of what they've taken care of. They are the rar guys and stuff like that. <laughs> So, you know, um, I'm just me, and so, you know, taking the break in between as far as, like, oh, Joe Rogan Experience official YouTube channel, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah, science and math and, you know, spirituality and all sorts of stuff. Oh, my, okay, I could, I could handle that. That's cool. <laughs> oh, MMA? All right. <laughs> I didn't do MMA, you know. <laughs> <laughs> However, if you turn the M's upside down in New Jersey, there's Wawa. So, you know, it'd be the A squared. <laughs> <laughs> I am that dork. Yes, I am. <clears throat> However, <laughs> it is what it is. And so, you know, I just... It's one of those situations where certain people understand 
So, if in reference to certain other situations, such as the supposed COVID, whatever, you know, uh, when I put in writing the military BDSM collision, that, 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 that's kind of the same in reference to why would you exclude or ostracize someone? That's kind of the same situation I already dealt with in reference to the scuba diving aspects, it would kind of be ignorant in certain capacities because why would you think that that would be care, concern, compassion, humanity, human decency, or anything like that, especially when you add into consideration my Medal of Honor art project trips and certain locations such as like Woburn Parish area. As far as the modern day book, you can go to my website www.seasonnewling.com and a few situations that I brought forward as far as how many times I had to call 911. Um, so, you know, but that would be common sense. But then again, you know, my own biological mother, biological father, and biological sister did not ever ask me as far as what actually happened during my uh, time in basic training. There's not one point in time Mike, Anna, or Patricia ever asked me, which I found odd all these years. There wasn't one point in time where I was ever asked by my own biological mother, biological father, and biological sister. Not one point in time that they ever asked me how my head injury happened on Palm Sunday in 2000. Though, I have had an affinity for Kuan Yin. So for those who have that understanding, I suppose there's a bit of irony when you take that in consideration. So similarly, none of them ever asked me about my scuba diving. I, my biological father did. My, he had, at one point in time, come over to the apartment in Irving, Irony of Ironies, in the year of 2011. Meets me outside on the back patio and he goes, so I heard you've been scuba diving. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he had been a merchant marine in the 1960s, 1970s. Okay. And he had asked if I did the juju juice because I told him I had completed the 16 scuba diver certification course. I didn't tell him the entirety of my scuba diving certifications, although the irony, he'd probably get a kick out of the Santo scuba diving certification as far as the uh, computing device as well as the CDU aspects in that particular reference of the propulsion device. And because uh, yeah, he had cert been certified by the School of Bolivar, very different, <laughs> very, very different. But I had told them that I had gotten into scuba diving, but it was as it was, and so he'd ask me, well, you didn't do the juju juice. What's the juju juice? I said, nitrox. Yeah, I'm certified in nitrox, why? I was like, that's the juju juice. <laughs> the what? The juju juice. I don't know what the juju juice is, but what is the juju juice? <laughs> and, but he also got certified in scuba diving um, with the J and the K valve time frame. That's when he had been involved with scuba diving, for those who understand that. And he was like, you know, what are these, uh, you know, what are these scuba divers like? Oh, you know, they are what they are. I haven't um, spoken with any of them in a while. And he just kind of crossed his arms and leaned back and said, why not? And so, you know, after, after a few situations, uh, I didn't see any need to uh, involve myself anymore with that. And so he had explained that there were certain types of scuba divers that thought it was funny with the J&K valve to uh, move that emergency lever. And I was like, yeah, those types of uh, scuba divers are kind of useless when it comes to the civilian recreational types because 
They just don't understand how to appreciate life, now do they? And it was just, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a few of those that, you know, there's some of us who have a different viewpoint of how scuba diving is actually supposed to be. I concur. So, told him about how Cancun and Cozumel went, reminded him about the alcohol that I got in there when I was out in Cozumel area and stuff like that, and but he was dealing with uh, Anna and Patricia and all that diabetes stuff. And so, <clears throat> those factors, and um, yeah, there were a few other situations in those references. And so, uh, yeah, you know, other than that, there wasn't really any questions. So, you know, fast forward to now in April of 2022, still haven't been asked any questions. And sure, you know, you can leave a question in the um, comment area and I might answer it. Uh, it depends on what that is. Do so with respect and etiquette, please. So, you know, otherwise I haven't ever hidden when it came to that. And I didn't really have a problem discussing things within reason. But, you know, nobody's also, there's not ever been a point in time where anybody asked, which is a part of etiquette and respect. And so those aspects of etiquette and respect, if that's important, then you ask the one and only. So, you know, um, some people have had whatever opinions they've had, and those are those people's opinions. So while some may have been like, well, how much did she actually deserve? How much I earned on my own. That's how much. That pretty much answers that question. How much I earned on my own. So, it is what it is as far as that's concerned, in my opinion. But, you know, there are those who have feelings as far as how they're uh, exceptional in comparison to exemplary or extraordinary. It depends. Yeah. Some people have their feelings because there are those who, um, however they handle their certifications by their choices, whether in reference to just a open water or advanced open water or assistant instructor or dive master or instructor, it depends on. I just didn't want to deal with certain factors. I knew an individual who had said that he was in a competition with some other uh, scuba diver regarding the numbers of um, students or something. And um, you know, nowadays, as far as uh, 2022, I guess it depends on if that was really truthfully a competition, well then, what would the numbers be as far as um, finding A and finding B as far as the Dropbox links? And or uh, finding A and finding B in reference to the physical copies of books. And or finding A and finding B regarding, you know, Amazon and, you know, Kindle and stuff like that. And so, yeah, or modeling. As as that's so, but I also wasn't in competition with anybody except for myself. I, I'm just that type of person. After um, after my international taekwondo, second and third place, and inspiring in form, I really just didn't have any sensation to really get into competition. My biological mother really tried to push that, and it was one of those that I don't care to. So I did do the track and field stuff, but it wasn't really in that genuine competitive way. It was more team-oriented, despite 
the individualized aspect because of being the floater or the ringer as far as that's concerned. So I had more of a team player view on that in comparison to the way the normalcies of track and field. Um, it was just a personal viewpoint because of the team aspects for St. John Vianney High School. And then, um, yeah, as far as going to the military, as far as the Army branch, that's how it goes. Unless you're called to take care of a mission, um, you usually go with the team. But I didn't graduate basic training. And so, yeah, that's different. So, I've been honest as far as that's concerned, because it's important to be honest. Those Ten Commandments, you have no idea how important those really truthfully are. Because it's not just in regards of in-person, face-to-face, in-person discussions, or a lecture in this capacity, because people learn from lectures, and if you genuinely care about safety, if you genuinely care about life, you would know, understand, and comprehend that there's really only one person who can speak about my scuba diving. I mean, sure, now that I've put some in writing, you can do so within what I put in writing. And sure, in reference to my official YouTube channel, please do subscribe and share the links to my official videos, please and thank you. Uh, and you can go to my website, www.susanmilling.com, and go over that sort of stuff by technicalities. But my scuba diving itself. So, oh, it's not something you can discuss. Because as far as the pictures I took, well, that's, that's the pictures I took. And from some of the experiences that I had already discussed, well, those are some of the experiences I already discussed. That's about it. So, yeah, sure, I protected uh, the above sea level aspects on Earth. Mm -hmm. And it is true that the ocean, it's the deadliest location. And the Bermuda Triangle is the Bermuda Triangle as far as certain things. And yes, the areas where I went is where the areas that I went to. As far as, you know, the Atlantic. So, yeah, I mean, I had my gear for the reasons that I had my gear. Um, I didn't just buy a bunch of scuba stuff for no reason. I mean, <laughs> what could anybody see a reason for, for example, um, the cookies or the scuba line wheel? Other than cavern and cave scuba diving. So you guys have a great day. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel. Like and share my official YouTube videos. Go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com. You guys have a good day.